Good day, good people. Today is the 3rd of, of uh, sometime, August 2011. You're listening to FreethinkRadio.com. This is Lifting the Veil, and I'm your host, Carrie Lee. For all of you that have been waiting anxiously for this, yes, I do have Dean Clifford, who is a sovereign, on the show to discuss um, all things sovereign under the, uh, uh, under the regime. So, without further ado, Dean, how are you, and thank you for joining Oh, you're you're more than welcome, and thanks for having me today. No problem. Now, um, as a lot of uh, I've been, I mean, I've been posting it like crazy. Your channel for Free Manitoba, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a couple messages that I've been given, or a message right now, and then I have a question. I would like to get out of the way quickly. Um, I, if anybody hasn't seen. Um, the Free Manitoba site. I suggest that you check it out. It's the channel on uh, YouTube, Free uh, Free Man, and then Itoba. So uh, uh, capitals on F R E E M A N, and then uh, lowercase I T O B A. Um, this is this is a really uh, fantastic channel. That if you've ever had any questions to sovereignty. Um, all the answers are right there for you, and you just have to take the time to listen. Now, um, a friend on on Facebook, Mick, had sent me a message saying, Hey, Carrie, here's my story for Dean. Hope it isn't too long. I did actually have to whittle it down a bit. I don't half waffle on when I get started. Hi, Dean. My name's Nick or Mick, and I live in England, but please don't hold that against me. I just wanted to thank you for the works you've put into exposing the corruption and trickery the so-called Crown Police Courts and Government uses to try and continually beat us down mentally, financially, and spiritually. I've been looking into sovereignty and common law for around a year. Now, with one or two failed attempts at using it correctly under my belt, anyway, I accidentally came across, or as I like to think, guided towards your videos on YouTube around two to three weeks ago and was literally blown away by the information you shared. It was as if my soul was screaming at me that this was the real shit, and I just res- and it just resonated through my entire being. Like Carrie, I couldn't sleep after watching them, as the energies I received were far too intense to even think about sleep that night. You were right in your video when you said, your head literally feels like it's going to explode with the endless possibilities. Anyway, it wasn't long before I had the opportunity to try, to, uh, try it out for myself. What if, effect it ha- what if any effect it had... So I got the opportunity to test it out that weekend. A friend and I had pulled into town, which is Middlesbrough, UK, to get some supplies for a festival we were on our way to. And we pulled outside to to my usual sandwich shop. We were inside for under a minute, and when I came out, there were two armed police officers waiting in their patrol jeep. As I walked out, one of them shouted to me, whose van is that? To which I replied, it's mine, it belongs to my company. Both of them immediately jumped out of their jeep and approached me in a very purposeful way. My van was parked in a restricted area, they told me, and began demanding my details, to which I replied with the usual, I am, am I being arrested, and am I obliged to answer your questions? Anyway, he started to get a bit pissed with me, so I decided that seeing as I'm fully insured, taxed, and with a valid MOT certificate, I would give him my details, adding that it was under threat and duress. They were armed after all. Oh, where did I go? I just, I just missed it. Where is it here? I I hate that when you click and it just jumps. They were armed after all. Where is? Where am I? Where am I? Oh, it's a really long one too. Uh, I will not be entering into contract with you today, which he replied, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. So I replied, okay, if I don't know what I'm talking about, how do you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, he didn't like that but looked at his partner, nodded his head, and then walked away, telling me to move the van before it was towed away, and over and under, two minutes tops, no ticket, nothing. Now, Cleveland police are not known for being the nicest bunch of people out there, and this struck me as very odd indeed. I usually end up antagonizing them enough to spend at least a night in the cells, and this was not like any other police poll I've ever had. Anyway, the weekend after, I attended a private outdoor party on a local farmer's land, and the police came to at about 3 a.m. to try and close down the noise due to complaints. There were no complaints. The nearest house is 2.3 miles, uh, 2 to 3 miles away minimum. We only had the music on low, so it couldn't disturb the farmer's livestock. Anyway, they attempted to question and search everyone present 
starting with me, I'm 6'3 and weigh around 220, so I do stand out a bit in the crowd. So when they attempted to take my details, I gave them my name again, followed by the sentence, I am the administrator for that account, and any contract you want me to enter into with you will be on my terms, not yours. And before they had finished even writing my name down, they looked up at me, then at each other, and then walked away and started using their bully boy tactics on some of the other guests there. Anyway, a couple of them who had seen the way I had interacted with the police, told them the same thing and got the exact same result I had. The ones who gave names were taken over to the police van and searched before being released as nothing was found. Anyway, two of the officers then tried to get all friendly with us and change their attitudes, so I began quizzing them on certain points that I had picked up from your videos, and they could not or would not answer any of the main questions that I put to them. Example, their roles as trustees, and one or two other points. And after around 30 minutes, they just got back into their vehicle and let us be. Once again, very strange indeed. I only wish I had my video camera on me to share, but my phone battery had just died. Anyway, I know they were only small victories, but even so, it still felt damn sweet. So once again, thanks for your work in exposing this and in sharing it amongst us. It is greatly appreciated as I have a good idea of the shit you must have went through to finally get to the stage of knowledge where you are today, as I have been at the receiving end of some pretty rough justice myself over the years, and if you're ever in England, then the first beer and maybe even a few more are on me. Blessings, King. Truly a man amongst men. Mick. So that is a letter that was written just for you. So on that, uh, what do you think of that? What are your thoughts? <laughs> I like that. Uh, definitely understands the concepts by saying uh, if, if, there, if there's going to be a contract today between us, it's going to be under my terms. They didn't like that, so they left. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah, I like that. That's kind of laughable. The only thing you could follow up with uh, there would be uh, to do things like I've had people here say where the the police tell people to you know get out of your car. You know, well, okay. I, I you know I, I they don't actually say the the conditional acceptance routine where I accept your offer and the condition this or that. They just say, well, we don't have a contract. If you want me to get out of my car, it's going to cost you fifty thousand bucks. Right. Yeah. And exactly. They try to make it sound like they don't know what you're talking about, uh, but, but but they know damn well what you're talking about, and they, 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 that's the usual routine is, oh, I don't know what you're talking about, or you don't know what you're talking about. You know, thanks for telling me what I don't know, you know, and they, yeah, they, they, exactly. they, they try to make you sound crazier, like you might be uh, like, oh, this guy, you know, he questions authority, or he thinks he's a sovereign, he doesn't have to obey our laws, and all this kind of stuff, but now the... the the, the things that have, people have had happen to them when they say things like that to the police should, if the laws were truly enforceable the way they claim, their first response should have been to have beaten you on the spot and handcuffed you. Because exactly. that's what they normally do. So you know something's up right away when they start getting wary and they the two of them go back to their patrol car and have a little talk and then want to come back and talk to you again. So they can get their, uh, they, they can kind of get a plan of action together as to how they're going to try to trap you or contract with you. So that, that pretty much proves everything right there. You don't ever need any more proof that this is exactly what's going on. You just have to learn how to operate yourself more uh, with more sure of yourself when you're out there talking with police and just out and about, especially when you want to start traveling without a license and without a license plate or your own license plate. I don't know what yeah, else exactly. to say about that. How about you give us uh, and all the listeners a feel for how you got involved in this and what started your path? What started you down on this path? Oh wow! Uh, well, yeah. Speaking of taking my lumps, uh, I started now. I think 15 years ago when I just gotten out of university and started my own construction company. I think I was 20 at the time. Uh, not even 20. 19. I think I was 19 when I started my own construction company. In the very first year, I filed with Revenue Canada for income taxes. I think I'd made a, a gross profit of about $9,000, and they sent me a $29,000 tax bill in the mail. And so that started a four-year battle with them, and I knew nothing back then, absolutely nothing. I still thought, you know, the Canadian government was a real government and the whole nine yards, and uh, I, I tried fighting Revenue Canada, and they leaned my house, and they seized my bank accounts, and and uh, being a fairly inquisitive guy all my life, I remember thinking, well, th this, this isn't right. I, how do they have the amount of power that they have, and they can just walk in and do all this stuff without any real claim against me because they refused to prove anything. They tried telling me the burden of proof was on me to prove that I didn't make the money that they claimed I did. And I remember thinking how wrong that was back then. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. How should I have to pr How is it even possible for me to prove that I didn't do something? So I started looking into it. I think the first website I ever came across was uh, Detax Canada for Eldon Warman. 
And uh, a lot of this, the, the theories in there were all valid uh, for the most part, but nothing really could help you because I, got, I had my ass handed to me by Revenue Canada for the first three, four years until I started going my own way and asking my own questions. And uh, they went away. I haven't filed now since 1995. I actually just found my last filing. It was in some of my files I kept just for shits and giggles for uh, posterity. But uh, my last year was 1995, I think, that I ever filed. And it, it started coming together even way back in the day, even though I didn't know what I was doing correctly, when uh, I would have visits at my home from one of these agents. And they would come and sit in my living room. And and instead of the alleged $29,000 they claimed I owed them, after a couple of years, I'd, I'd said to them way back in the day, well, you know what, I don't owe that money. I'm not going to argue with you people, so I'm just never going to file ever again until we get to the bottom of what happened, of why you think I owe you this money. And I, I learned how to exist with no bank accounts and uh, completely off the system, out of the grid. That was my solution back then. Well, I'm just going to exist completely off the grid so they can't find me, and then I don't have to worry about anything anymore. So I learned to exist with no credit, with no bank accounts, with no nothing. And it was actually quite simple and uh, very, very relieving uh, to, to do it that way. It wasn't a problem, and they'd come by my house and be like, well, and then all of a sudden the, the, the focus started to shift after about three years, and they started saying, well, you know, let's just forget about that money you owe us for right now, and let's concentrate on getting you to file for the last couple of years. And I said, no, no. I said, I told you, I'm not going to file. I said, until you guys send me a confirmation, I don't owe you anything. I'm not filing at all. And so they kept up with that, and eventually I started asking them. I said, well, hey, you know what? As a contractor, I'd be a little concerned if somebody owed me $29,000. I wouldn't be worried about asking about new work to do with them. I'd be more worried about collecting on what I'm owed already. How come you guys only want me to file? You're not concerned about the previous year's alleged debt. And they would never answer that. And so that's what started me, started me down the proper path to try and figure out what's going on which led, led to, obviously, you know, within the last number five years or so, we've, well, okay, well, this is all contract. You don't owe any money until you contract. And because I wasn't renewing the yearly contract, they were more concerned about that. Over the, uh, the, over the next couple of years, the amount started going down. They started sending me offers in the mail. Well, how, how does $17,000 sound? How does $9,000 sound? I think the last time I ever got a letter from them, I think they were down to $3,000 was their offer, and I just wasn't replying at all. I got in the <laughs> habit of actually pulling out a red marker and every time I got a new notice from them, I just write, go fuck yourself on it in red marker. And I sent it right this back is, to them. This is one of the reasons why most of us love you so much. Because <laughs> of the fact that you just don't give a fuck. It's no, I just, just one big fuck you at the corporation, ha ha ha. It, it really was, actually. And that was the funniest thing, because that seemed to have the most impact, because they couldn't contract with me, right? And they, they didn't know what to do, because even they, they never even sent me court documents, uh, because I would have written, written the same thing on them. I've done that with traffic tickets. Uh, a number of I, I went out with my brother one time just to go get a bunch of photo radar tickets when they first appeared in Winnipeg just to see what would happen. Uh, so we got about 17 of these bastards after a couple of weeks in the mail, and uh, I didn't care about any implications on my license or on my registration or anything, and we just wrote uh, a different thing on each one of these notices that we got in the mail. And I wrote, go fuck yourself on a couple of them. I wrote, no contract on a few. I wrote, I don't accept your contract offer on other ones. All in big red marker right across the ticket diagonally and sent it all back to the courthouse. Well, I never heard about them ever again. Still, to this day, I think I, I heard from a collection agent like a couple of years later who tried collecting on these things, but they all just went away, right? And so well, that and was the thing the, with the, the collection, and not to interrupt, but the thing with collection agencies is once they're given to a collection agency, that means that the, the person holding the debt sold it to the collection agency, and you're not even in contract with them. Of course not. They discounted it, right? The, 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 the court's yeah. already made. Now I know the court's already made the money off the securities that were generated in default conviction for the most part, and they made their money and then discounted the, 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 the debt that doesn't even exist anymore to a collection agency, which is fraud, because they've already written it off, yeah. and they've collected on the security. Um, but anyways, so, so we, I used to do stuff like that back in the day, and I just didn't give a shit, exactly. And that's because I figured, okay, well, I just learned how to live off the grid anyways, like completely out of, the, uh, out of their box, so they can't find me. So I'm just not going to worry about this anymore. And I thought I was going to be able to live like that for the rest of my life until, uh, until the first incident, incident happened where I got pulled over in Brandon, Manitoba in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve on my way home for Christmas, and I got harassed by some police uh, who had, uh, I had a license and I had insurance at the time, they had no reason for what they did other than they probably had an alert on my file to mess with this guy. And I got dragged out of my truck and I got beaten by about six Brandon police officers and thrown in jail for 16 hours for nothing, for absolutely nothing. And then they charged me with obstruction of a peace officer and about five other charges. 
So I just did my usual tactic with that, and I just ignored it for about five years. And there was three failures 